So after years of driving your car into the ground, your brakes need serious attention. You can either pay a little to replace your worn out pads now, or a lot when they wreck your drums and rotors later. And if you fail to do that, well then, you know what will ultimately happen. Of course, this video isn't about cars. It's about something much bigger. For the past hundred years, we have driven our planet hard, pumping carbon into the atmosphere at a reckless rate. This is having profound effects on our climate, causing the ice caps to melt and our seas to rise. In the coming decades, sea level rise will threaten millions of Americans living in or near coastal cities. But for one city in particular, sea level rise isn't just some distant threat. In Norfolk, Virginia, residents feel the effects of rising seas every time it rains. The land under Norfolk is sinking while the water around it rises, making the city a real-time look at what other coastal regions will face if we don't take steps now to prepare. So there was a storm offshore today, uh, northeastern, and I'm gonna take you over to a neighborhood that is one of the first to uh, flood during these. Uh, this is Larry Atkinson. Larry studies climate and sea level at Old Dominion University in Norfolk. Larry says that what was once occasional flooding has now become routine. So there we are, end of the road. What's happened is in the last century or centuries, the ocean has been warming up a bit. There's um, more ice melting. So the sea level rise is rising faster. So it's accelerating. Of course, flooding is nothing new for Norfolk, but climate change is making things much worse. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says sea levels could rise as much as six feet by the end of the century. That could be devastating for low-lying cities like Norfolk. Under those conditions, much of the region's 1.6 million people and most of its vital infrastructure, including the country's largest naval base and second largest port, would be at risk from severe flooding and storm surges. In my 50 plus years um, in this city, it is the worst that it has been. We've lived here for 18 years and, and it has gotten worse. It's really bad, uh, especially when watching the news, there's some areas that flood no matter what happens. People perceive climate change to be something that's kind of happening inexorably over a long period of time and we're not really gonna see the effects in our lifetime. And in fact, climate change and sea level rise in particular are a series of abrupt events. And those abrupt events, each one of them has a particular uh, consequence that we need to deal with. Sandy delivered absolute mayhem up and down the Jersey Shore. Every street flooded, almost everywhere impassable. One of the worst storms that has ever hit Atlantic City. Hurricane Sandy, one of the most destructive storms in recent memory, pummeled the East Coast in late 2012. Climate scientists agree that higher sea levels boosted the storm surge pushing water further inland into areas previously out of reach. As the sea levels continue to rise, future Sandy-like storms will mean the difference between safety and extensive flooding for millions of Americans. A storm that brings in a two-foot storm surge, by 2050, that'll be a three-and-a-half-foot storm surge. So if it wasn't in your yard then, it might be. Norfolk's Sandy-like storm came in 2009 when a massive nor'easter hit the city. Entire neighborhoods were deluged. Soon after, the city's leaders decided to act. Over the past two to three years, we initiated a series of studies. The two combined identified about a billion dollars worth. To be sure, one billion dollars, more than the city's annual operating budget, is a lot of money. But compared to the cost of an action, it's a bargain. That's because for every dollar we invest in resilience, we save four dollars in disaster recovery costs. So remember your faulty brakes? Pay the bill now, or pay a lot more later. Yes, you can wait, but as you wait, whether you want to or not, you are trading away time and you are trading away potential options that, well, had we started in 2014, we could have done. But now it's 2025, you ain't gonna get there from here. We have the facts, we have the data, an enormous amount of data, and we have a plan, um, but we can't do it alone. So we've gotta have the partners to do it. But partners have been hard to come by. 97% of scientists agree that global warming is happening and is man-made. But an undercurrent of denial has stymied congressional action. And here in Virginia, the state legislature removed the words climate change and sea level rise 
before approving a study looking at the impacts of rising seas on coastal communities. Ignoring climate change won't make the issue go away. It will just make it harder to fix. The scale of people who, whose consensus is that climate is changing and that it's impacting temperature and precipitation and sea levels, it's about this big, all right? The people who are saying that this isn't happening or that it's not due to anthropogenic causes is about this big. In the federal land, the obstacle is this chill put on by the Republican House. You can't have an ideological debate about it. You know, it's beyond that. Your feet are wet. You know, you lost two cars. You know, you can't get to work, uh, things like that. If this problem only existed in Norfolk and the surrounding region, the consequences of an action would be manageable. But more than a third of Americans live in a county with a shoreline, and that number is increasing. In the coming decades, cities like Miami, Boston, New Orleans, San Francisco, and New York will be increasingly vulnerable to rising waters, flooding, and more destructive storms. The urgency is that I don't want our citizens to have to lose everything before we do something. And so the sooner we're able to determine how we're going to redesign our city, redesign homes, then we're doing it in preparation for instead of after the fact. Once again, doing nothing is not an option. Our faulty brakes analogy can only go so far. We can always buy a new car, but we can't buy a new planet.